Howdy sports fans, today we're just going to cover a quick one uh, on debugging uh, Ed Tracker. So this is for all those of you who are having troubles figuring out wiring or software or so, having troubles with it. Um, save us the effort of kind of having to uh, respond to too many emails. Hopefully this video will cover the majority of scenarios that people are finding themselves in when they're, for some reason it's not working. So we're going to cover some basics around the hardware. Uh, and you know this covers um, putting it into breadboard like this um, or soldering up your own device into a PCB um, or any, and then sticking it in an enclosure. <coughs> we'll also cover just briefly the software side of things but I would hasten to point out that you know if you're having trouble with calibration um, then, then there's a video that covers that already. Um, drift and stuff like that just go over the calibration exercise, it should get drift down to an acceptable limit. But if you're having other issues, it's just not working period, hopefully this video will give you some ideas. Let's start with one of the most basic questions um, for those who do it, which is around soldering. So for newcomers to soldering, there's probably some misconceptions. So let's just go over how you do it, how you're supposed to do it. You heat the pin and the pad and then you bring the solder in and you melt it into the joint so look at the tip here it's touching the pin and the pad the little disc on the circuit board and then we're introducing the solder once they're hot enough for it to melt it and it kind of seeps in forming a meniscus that's how we want it how we don't do it is applying the solder onto the tip and then kind of plastering it over and just hoping that it kind of clags on and holds pins in place. This is not how to do it. You end up with bad poor connections, bad joints, possibly bridge joints here as the solder kind of gets stuck everywhere uh, and it just looks messy. But it won't, you'll get bad connections this way. So again, tip on the pin and the pad introduce that solder until it solders in. Um, one good thing to do beef up this connector here the pads that hold it onto the circuit board these commonly break off so just if you can touch a bit on there beef them up. Okay well that's soldering not everybody of course has to solder their head tracker some of them use a breadboard. How about Arduino we have your sensor breakout board. This is a, an MPU9150, but it could be an MPU6050 or a GY521 board. Uh, got a button here as well that we're going to show if you want to use one. Okay, so the first obvious ones, we're going to work down this MPU board. Uh, VCC pin, take that to the VCC pin on your Arduino. Fairly straightforward and obvious. <coughs> Next pin down is ground. Take the ground to any one of your available ground pins on your Arduino. There th should be three of them. Take it to whichever one you want. The next pin down is SCL. We're going to take that to pin 3 on the Arduino. Pin 3. The next one down is SDA. We're going to take the SDA pin over to pin 2 on the Arduino like so. The next one down on your breakout board will be EDA and ECL or possibly XDA and XCL. You can ignore those, we don't do anything with those. AD0, again you can kind of ignore it. Uh, the general advice on the data sheet is to take wire it to ground so I'm going to do that for completeness but uh, generally you'll be fine um, unwired, leaving it unwired. The INT pin, the final one on the Arduino. Now this is optional uh, but if you don't wire the int pin, you need to be very careful to ensure that in the software you set the device to polling mode, not interrupt mode. So if you don't wire the int pin, you must set the head tracker software to polling. I'm going to wire it. Um, if you do wire it, and that would be my advice, uh, wire the int pin to pin 7 on the Arduino. Finally, um, you've just got your button to sort out. Again, this is optional really, you, it's used for recentering the device. But you can recenter it in the latest GUI software with a button press on your uh, on your keyboard and macro. But uh, if you do want to wire it, pay attention to the pins here. Look, pins on the edge of what the ones I'm wiring up. 
Um, I'll take one of them to ground, any ground you like, and then take the other side of the button, a wire there, to pin 10 on the corner of the Arduino. And there you go. And pay attention to this button wiring. Um, wiring along the edges there, look, see? Not, not opposite one another. The pins opposite each other are internally connected and they're the same. And there we go. In terms of powering it up, when you power it on initially, you should see, with no software in it, you should just see two lights. Power light on the Arduino, a power light on the MPU. No power light on the MPU, check your wiring. You're probably missing either the ground or the VCC pin. Yeah. Um, but that's all you should have with no software in it. Okay, task one, before you plug anything in, is uh, install the Arduino drivers. Now, there's, there's two sources that. You can go to the Arduino website, download their software off there, and the drivers are bundled with that. It's quite a big download, so what we've done is on the EdTracker website, you can download just the drivers from there. We've not altered them, it's just stripped down, just saves you downloading a 150 megabyte file. You can just download the drivers by themselves, but they're identical, the same thing. Install those into Windows first. What, what you can do is, the first time you plug the device in, if it's not recognised, you can obviously, Windows will pop up and say, unrecognised device, and you point it to those driver files, yeah? Uh, same as any other USB device that you plug into Windows. I'm going to plug this in. This is a blank Arduino, no Ed Tracker firmware in it at all. <coughs> plug it in. You get a brief flash on an orange light LED there, but then basically just the power lights, the LED there, and the one on the MPU. And you'll notice the, the boing from Windows um, to, to tell you that that's detected. So, what we can do is in Device Manager, open up COM ports and you should see your Arduino Leonardo um, on a COM port, COM7 in this instance. If you don't see that uh, then there are a few possible things to check out. Your cable, it might not be a data cable, it might be a power only cable. Some cables are used for charging mobile phones, they just have the power lines in them not the data lines, that might explain it. Try a different cable. It might be the, com the, the USB port on your PC uh, particularly try uh, if you're using a USB 3 one and you've not got the right drivers installed it might not work backwardly compatible with the USB 2 device which is what this is so so you know try a different port um, failing that it could be and obviously one very unlikely chance is that the Arduino itself is, is knackered um, in my experience very rare the most might have happened is if you've been um, stressing this connector you might have broken the tracks around it but if it's brand new and you've been very delicate with it that's unlikely um, assuming the Arduino is fine uh, the only remainder I would, I would sort of suggest you check is your USB driver stack in, uh, in Windows that's a bit of a black art USB uh, on Windows 7 particularly with virtual COM ports um, seems to get a bit balked after you've been adding loads in over time um, Use the USB DView uh, program, which I'll provide a link for, uh, to investigate what drivers you've got installed, strip out the ones that you no longer need. It might be some devices you've plugged in years ago that, that, that have taken up COM slots and, and don't need to anymore. Um, and clear that up. And essentially what you need to be seeing is that Arduino Leonardo device in your um, device manager. So assume we're there, we're all good to go, you're now ready to flash it. So what about problems during the calibration phase, if you like, that first flash that you have to put in? Well, what you should be seeing once you've loaded that, that um, firmware in is two solid lights on the Arduino and then one of them flashing here just to indicate that it's, it's, it's working, it's doing something. Yeah, so that's what you should be seeing. Um, the reset button doesn't do anything during calibration, so you don't have to worry about that. But what you should be seeing on the GUI is, is generally the head moving around, you know, you should see numbers in all of these, the temperature should be reading something. If any of these values for your gyro and your accelerometer are zero and not moving at all, um, then, and particularly if your temperature as well is showing not necessarily zero, but it might be some random number, some aspect of the wiring between your MPU and your Arduino is undoubtedly wrong. It might be a knackered Arduino, uh, MPU, again, I've seen some reports of that, but it's probably unlikely. So check your wiring basically in your sol or your soldering. Um, and then I'm not going to go over it all again here. 
but do the white tracker settings just to reset everything if you want to um, and then start your calculate bias values once your device is warmed up. I'm not going to go over calibration here, another video covers that plenty fine. So those are probably the issues you're going to hit during calibration. Now let's have a look at um, the second flash operation, putting in the final uh, piece of firmware in it for the head tracker. Potential problems then during the, the um, final phase where you've actually got the final piece of firmware loaded into it. You should be seeing this kind of arrangement, three solid lights, two on the Arduino, one on the MPU still, and one flashing light on the Arduino. Um, from a GUI perspective, you should be seeing the version number in here, 2.20.7 at the moment. You should be seeing a temperature. Uh, if you touch the MPU, you should see that change quite rapidly. You can see the temperature sensor is inside that chip there. If I touch that, my body heat kind of increases that temperature. <clears throat> and you can see, obviously, the, the, the head is moving and all of the um, uh, yaw and pitch lines are moving as well. Uh, if I click the button, the head should reset to dead ahead. I haven't calibrated this, so this is the reason why this is drifting off massively. Um, so, potential problems here. Um, to be honest, if you've managed to calibrate it, it's pr probably pretty much working. The only problem I've ever seen happen here is where somebody's miswired the button or it's accidentally jammed down, and so it's basically constantly held like so. If this is the case, you'll see a solid light here. Uh, the green light is actually flashing very rapidly. And you can see it's connected, but everything's just frozen and is not doing anything, yeah? Um, if you see that, chances are your button is held down. So just <laughs> check that, and uh, or, or you've wired it wrong and you've shorted it out, shorted the wires out permanently. Um, so that's potential issues there. If you put it in a case, that can potentially be the problem, is the button is jammed on the edge of the case. Check that. Um, <coughs> assuming that that's all good, the second piece of debug that you can do just to verify is going to your USB game controllers and you should see Ed Tracker 2 listed as a game controller device. Yeah. Uh, if you click the properties on that, you should see some crosses, well, the one cross and a z-axis slider, and if you move the device, you should be seeing those moving. That's the ultimate test. If you're seeing those move, the device is working. It's doing what it should. So if you've got any problem further on in in game, it, uh, it's probably you know game settings or mapping axes. But ultimately, all Ed Tracker pretends to be is a three-axis joystick. And if you can test and see in USB game controllers that that's working, you're you're all good. Um, okay. That's it, I think. Some basic debugging for Ed Tracker for those of you who are having some challenges with getting it working. Um, I hope that's been helpful uh, and see you later.